we're used to seeing numbers in our base 10 system. And what that means when a number's in base 10, any number that you see at the store or anywhere really, in any math problem, unless you're talking about different bases, is going to be in base 10. And what we mean by that is we use the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are the single digits we use to create all of the numbers that we talk about. We can talk about the number 45,714 using these just these 10 digits here. What we do different, just using these digits here, is put them in different columns. And in base 10, the columns go up by powers of 10. So I use the digits 0 through 9, and then once I want to represent 10 objects, instead of having a weird symbol for the, the amount of 10, we go to the next column. We go from the ones place to the tens place. So I'm just going to be using these digits, these 10 digits here, 0 through 9. And to represent the number 10, I have 110 and 0 ones. So we go over to the next column. And as we saw in the previous podcast, numbers in base 10 start with the ones place, or 10 to the 0, then 10 to the first then 10 to the second, and so forth. Each column represents a larger power of 10. Right? That's in base 10. In base 5, we're not going up by powers of 10 anymore. We're going up by powers of 5. So we don't use the digits 0 through 9. What we use instead are the digits 1, or 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And using just these digits, we can write, and we can write a number in base 5 that represents 13 objects or 17 objects, but it's not going to be written 1, 3 or 1, 7. Okay? So let's think about this. In base 5, we're not going up by powers of 10, but we're going up by powers of 5. So 5 to the first, which is just 1, or excuse me, 5 to the 0, which is 1. 5 to the first, which is 5. 5 squared, which is 25. So, if I wanted to have these place values here, we saw the first four digits here. It was five digits. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. To represent the amount 5. In base 5, we're only allowed to use these digits. The symbol for 5 up here does not exist in base 5. We only use 0 through 4. So each column represents, in this particular column, represents the ones place. And we saw you know, just one single digit represent that amount of objects. But to get to the um, number in base 5 that represents 5 objects, we need to write this as 1, 5, and 0, 1s. Okay, we're using the columns to represent powers of 5. So, the numbers, the first, let's say, 8 numbers in base 5 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's good. We saw those. To get to 5, we're going to have 1, 5, and 0, 1s. To get to the number 6, we have 1, 5, and 1, 1. And to get to the number 7, we have 1, 5, and 2, 1s. I know this sounds really strange, but let's go back to, uh, to the next particular, you know, the next slide, and see if we can clarify this a little bit more. Let's look at this particular example and see if we can figure out how many objects there are up here, how many blue dots we have, and represent the number of blue dots in base 10, and represent that number of blue dots in base 5. In base 10, really what we're doing is counting them, right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? Once we get to 10, we can group those together. So here we have 10, right? And we have 10 blue dots. That represents 1, 10. And then how many are left over? Do we have enough to make another 10? 1, 2, 3, 4. No, we only have enough to make 1, 10, so we put 1, 10, and then we have 4, 1s left over. So to represent the number of blue dots 
in base 10, we write this as 1 4. In other words, 1 10 and 4 1s. Now in base 5, we're not going to be grouping things together in terms of 10s. Every time we get a group of 5, we're going to put that number of 5s here, and then whatever's left over, we're going to put that here. So let's go and circle all our groups of 5 and see how many groups of 5 we have. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's one group of 5. So we have one group of 5. Let's see if we can find another group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's another group. So there's another one. And we don't have enough left over, right? We only have four left over. We can't group another five together. So how many fives do we have? We have one, two. We have two groups of five. And how many ones do we have left over? We don't have enough to make another five. We only have four. So we want to write that here. So this number in base five is actually two, four. And to represent, not to get confused that it's, it's in, not in base 10, we write a little small five at the end. So this represents 14 objects, right? In our particular number systems that we use here, we talk about base 10. We have 14 objects. Well, to represent 14 objects in base five, we write that as two, four. In other words, two groups of five and four ones left over. Let's expand on this. When you're asked to convert one base into base 10, what you need to figure out, first of all, is determine what base you're in. And usually this subscript at the end of the number is going to tell you the base. And that's incredibly important because it tells you by what power we're increasing our place value. So we're increasing by powers of 5. We're in base 5. That means this is our 1's place, our 5's place, our 5 squared's place, 5 to the 3rd, and so forth. So what I suggest that you do is first, once you see what the base is, to go ahead and write out what the particular place values represent. So our first column here, we know, is always going to represent the 1's, right, the 1's place. No matter what system you're in, or excuse me, what base you're in, the first column is going to represent the single digits, the 1's place. Now we're going to be increasing by powers of 5. So this will be 5 to the first power, which really is just the 5's place. That tells us how many 5's we have. Next, we're going to go up by another power 5, or 5 squared. This tells us how many 25's we have, so 25's. And if we go up by one more power 5, this is 5 to the third, which is the same as going up by 1 25's. So we have the 125th place, the 25th place, the 5th place, and the 1's place. So when we have the number 1, 0, 4, 3, and this is in base 5, this particular numeral that is in this column tells us how many groups we have. We have three single objects. We have four groups of five. We have zero groups of 25, and we have one group of 125. So just like we did when we were in base 10, this represents one group of 125, plus we have zero groups of 25. We have four groups of 5, and we have three groups of 1. Oops, this should be a plus, three groups of 1. Now, let's simplify this. 1 times 25 is 125, plus 0 times 25, we have 0, is added from that column. We're adding 4 times 5, which is 20, and 3 times 1, which is 3. So let's add these up. 125 plus 0 plus 20 plus 3, what does that represent? Well, this will be 145, right? 125 and 20 is 145, plus 3 is 148. So in base 10, we write this amount of objects here, and base 5 is the same as saying 148 objects. Having a number in base 5 going over by powers of 5, one group of 125, zero groups of 25, four groups of five, three groups of one. If you were to write that out and count all those objects, that's the same as having you know, one times 100 
plus 4 times 10 plus 8 times 1. So writing this number in base 10 is equivalent to 148. One final time. When you're asked to convert a number that's in a different base other than 10, let's say base 5 or base 7 or base 6, it can be any base, and we can look at that on the next slide. But to convert it, first of all, determine what the power of each column is. We know it's going to be the ones column. And then what this base tells us is how many, you know, what power we're going to be increasing each column by. So we have ones, now we're going to go up by fives. One times five is five. Five times five is 25. 25 times five, we're going up by powers of five. That is what these columns represent. So we have one group of 125. We're adding zero groups of 25, four groups of five, and three groups of one. Let's look at another example in a different base. Let's convert the number 21210 in base 3. We want to convert that to base 10. First of all, if you see that you're in base 3, that tells you the power of each place value. Right? This is always going to be the ones column. This is what I would do first. Label what each column represents. This is the ones right? 3 to the 0, which is just the 1's column. This is 3 to the 1st, which is the 3 columns, right? 3 squared, 3 to the 3rd, and then 3 to the 4th. What that means, we have a column representing 81's. We have a column representing 27's, 9's, 3's, and 1's. So this number up above represents two 81's, 127, two 9's, 1, 3, and 0, 1's. This number here, when we have these numbers in each column, we're going up by powers of 3. So our columns are now represented by 1's, 3's, 9's, 27's, and 81's, going up by powers of 3. Now, to convert this into base 10, we just write this out. This 2 in this column represents 2 groups of 81 plus 1 group of 27 plus two groups of 18, plus one group of three, plus zero groups of one. Now let's multiply this out. We get 162 plus 27 plus 36 plus, oh, what did I do? Oh, I see what I did. Let me go right here. This is the mistake. It's not two times 18. I was working ahead. This is going to be 2 times 9. Sorry about that. So here we have the 81's column, 27's column, 2 groups of 9, 3 groups of 1 group of 3, and 0 groups of 1. Now we're on track. So we're going to have 18 plus 3 plus 0. Now let's add these together. This number right here, 162 plus 27 is 189. Plus, we add these two together, we're going to get 21, and this is going to be plus 0. And when we add these together, we're going to get, well, 189 plus, 100, or excuse me, plus 21, that's going to give me 210. 210. So what we did here was we took each column, and we saw that if we're in base 3, each column represents powers of 3. So we have the 1's column, the 3 column, the 9, 27, and 81. Notice every one of these numbers is a larger power of 3. So now we see if there's a 2 in the 81 column, that's just the same as having 2 times 81. 1 in this column represents 1 times 27, 2 times 9, 1 times 3, and 0 times 1. Notice, if we're in base 3, we only use the digits 0, 1, and 2. We don't use any other digits. We don't have a symbol in base 3. We don't have a symbol that we're used to seeing for the number 3. All we use in base 3 are the digits 0, 1, and 2. We use those symbols 
And we can use those symbols to represent every single number that we're used to seeing in base 10. If we wanted to write the number 5320 and only use the digits 0, 1, and 2 in base 3, we could do that because we're increasing by powers of 3. That's going to be on a separate podcast. However, when you're converting from a different base to the base 10, what you need to know is the value of each column, each place value. And depending on what the base is, is going to dictate what the power or what the value of that column is. When you're in base 3, you're going up by powers of 3. When you're in base 8, you're going to be going from 1s to 8s to 64ths and so forth. Depending on the base is going to tell you what the value of each column is. And then using the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to, but not including, the number of your base. So we're in base 3. We're going to go 0, 1, and 2 up to 3. We're not going to include the symbol for 3. Right? That's not included in base 3. And we use those digits to represent and use those numerals and put them in these columns to represent different numbers.